Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on which time zones you are and all the people who are tuned in. Um, I'm Shumantra. I'm going to be a, like, a host kind of for this one. It's kind of like anchorship, but not literally anchoring. Uh, we are going to talk in depth about your experience with the program and how, how the days went by, how you felt the experience in general. So I'm going to go ahead very quickly, talk about um, the three people that are in the call right now. Um, so you have, um, so on my, on my right, we have Maria Anago, who is currently an interaction designer at Red Hat. Shatha, who works as a software engineer at Hasura, and Samira, who is a VTech student and is a product designer for Jodokon. And uh, you guys can take like two odd minutes talking about yourself and letting people know what you're doing in a bit more depth than I did. And then we can kick off the questions. So go ahead. Right, I'll go first. Okay. So, hi, I'm Smira. I um, basically got involved with Fedora during my outreach internship. Uh, that was two years ago, uh, summer of 2020. And uh, my project was basically a design project. So that's how I got involved with open source design. And um, then after that, I did some open source design work with other conferences, mainly just Fedora. And um, I was looking for jobs. And I am now working as a product designer in a semi-open source company where the main tech stack is open source. Uh, so it's a German company, Yolocom, and they work in um, digital identity security and access management. And I'm also currently pursuing my, oh, right. I'm also a final year engineering student. <laughs> I don't see myself as an engineer, more like a designer, especially because when I started my outreach internship, that is where I fully embraced the identity of a designer. And yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, I'm Shatha. I uh, did outreachy with Fedora back in I believe 2019, and yeah, I, I worked on a project called Fedora Happiness Package with uh, Justin, Yona, uh, Alberto, and yeah, it was a pleasure. That was my first uh, uh, experience with open source. Then I went ahead and did uh, GSOC with Ceph uh, on the project called Tutology. And then I did a couple of more internships and then joined full time um, with Hasura, where uh, we uh, automate your API uh, creation uh, on top of your uh, schema. So yeah, that's that's uh, in short me. Oh, OK, I'll go next. Sumandra, can you mute yourself for a sec? Still a lot of beeping. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Masha or Maria, and I'm going to just before anything happens, I'm going to say that my son might barge in because it's a Saturday and he's home and he's three and a half. So he does not understand the concept of online conferences too well. So please excuse me in advance. Anyway, uh, I'm really glad to be here because I was a Fedora intern a long, long time ago, like maybe six years ago. So I, I could not remember, was it 2015 or 2016? Uh, it was a truly, I'll need to check. But I was an intern on the Fedora design team uh, for about nine months because in Czech Republic, you can go on interning uh, until you all agree. Uh, it's not like in the US where I'll just get three months in the summer and that does that. And from that, I went on to be a, on a full-time position, uh, uh, not on the Fedora team, but still at Red Hat. And so I'm kind of continuing on that path right now. So just kind of a, a good healthy mix between the UI and the UX and just, you know, lurking around the Fedora community still, um, not maybe contributing too much, but I'm, I'm there. Like I know what ha what's happening. Thanks. All right. So that, that's thanks for that info. The introductions. Um, I, I love the way you guys have actually taken time out on a Saturday to do this. 
uh, it's actually very important because you guys have been uh, sort of kind of the poster titles of the internship program that Pillar runs and all the internship program included. So you guys have broken through a lot of barrier myths and you have gotten a lot of experience as you have you know, progressed with the mentorship. So a couple of things that we would want the audience to currently understand and know. So first, let's start off with how was your experience when you started off with the uh, program? Like what went really well in the program? Like if you were a part of our Trichy, if you were a part of Chitop, um, like how was the mentorship program for you? Specifically, did it, did it use all of, all of your positive qualities? Did it, did it challenge you at some point? What went really good? Th that's what we are kicking off this thing. It's the same flow. You can kick off. Right. Um, I think it's hard to pick one thing that went really well. Um, I mean, I think the first thing uh, if I were to go, like, let's say, chronologically, the thing that impacted me the most was obviously my mentor, Marie Norden. So she, I think she made my, like, internship, like, she was the highlight, you could say, not only during the internship, but after that also. And um, I, I was obviously a bit scared. Uh, this was my first internship. I am not very tech savvy. I had tried contributing to open source a year before that uh, on the tech side, and I was not uh, super good at it. So I was a little scared, right? Um, but I think Marie being there to guide me through everything, she was perfect in throughout the thing. So for me, I think it's the mentor that makes the internship or makes the project. You know, even I, and I, I didn't tell her at that time, right? That um, I was scared or I was nervous, or at least I hope that it not, did not come off that way. But later on, we, we still, you know, get together once a month to just hang out and talk. And slowly after that, I was like, oh, I used to be shit scared, like during the course. I, I was so nervous. I would start like, you know, uh, sweating from, <laughs> from panic, like one hour before our calls, just so, because I wanted to impress her and I wanted uh, to you know for her to like my work and I wanted to do a good job so yeah I think one of the more like biggest challenges was actually presenting my work to someone else because it was not just me it was also everyone in the community a lot of times you're solving issues for other people um, that was one of the challenges that I sort of overcame that and obviously imposter syndrome I felt like I had lucked my way into that internship you know, and even during the internship, a lot of times I felt that, oh, I'm not doing enough or everyone's just pretending that my work is fine secretly, you know, they don't like it. So, yeah, that was my experience with Outreachy. I right. so relate with that. <clears throat> I mean, both the parts, especially like, you know, the first bit where you mentioned that you used to get like so nervous when you were, you know, waiting for meetings. Like, I remember my first meeting with Justin and two hours before, I was, like, ready with everything, like, you know, sorting out my internet and, you know, camera, like, everything. Like, this is even before I got selected. He just wanted to do an intro call. And I was just, like, like full of nerves, right? And But, yeah, like, he was just a, such a pleasure. Like, everybody here knows what a delight Justin is to work with. And, yeah, it's just such a pleasure to, like, talk to him. And then later on, you know, actually went ahead and like we, we, ha we, I think we used to do calls every single week and yeah, it was, it was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, the one thing that went really well, circling back to Samantha's question is that the communication of Adora community is just, it's just flawless. Like I've worked with open source communities after that and working a full-time job, but the the pace at which and the ease with which the communication happens inside fedora and get to encounter it in any other place like whether it be email communication or on telegram or irc wherever it may be it's just so good people are so approachable um, you can ask questions you can just like you know like they're also very good sounding words if, if you're just you know struggling with something you can reach out to them uh, even when I met these folks, all of that was like, you know, a hundred times more just because, you know, you're face to face. 
so yeah it was it was a delight so communication is one thing that went e extremely good and the second thing that again smira mentioned that imposter syndrome again something that i really relate with that that was again my first internship like ever so it was just such a such an empowering thing to be in in, in in like you know with so many talented people and to be among them and to learn so much from them and to work with them and just observe them how they go about you know communicating or you know solving some particular thing and learning so much from it but also what helped me doing all the things that i did in the, in, did in the internship also like kind of helped me realize that okay these are the things that i enjoy doing and these are the things that i don't particularly enjoy doing like you know in 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 the course of like all the things that i did in the span of the internship so yeah Oh, that's cool how you mentioned empowering, like and the word empower, because that's exactly how I felt. And it's funny because I never thought that anybody was as nervous as me when I first had like my first you know, blue jeans call with Mo Duffy. <laughs> I was crazy. I was checking my, you know, equipment the day before to make sure everything's working. <laughs> my Wi-Fi is fine. Oh gosh. Uh, I remember the conversation with a parrot that used to be in blue jeans, like, you know, checking your video and audio. And then going back to the empowering part, that's what I was uh, I was going to mention, um, because I'm coming from a sort of, I don't want to say community, but a background where when you do design work, you would get a lot of negative feedback. And in the Fedora community, it's not the same at all. Like you would do anything, maybe something really small, and then you would get so much, you know, encouragement and great feedback in return. Like... And that would include uh, somewhere in it some recommendations how to make it better but then it would start with something very nice and you would be made f to feel like you're you know the best designer in the world and that is in in turn so empowering that you are among all these people who are great professionals and awesome people but it's and still they tell you nice things about your work uh it was really great and it's funny how we all have different uh, mentors uh, i didn't realize that the really good perspective that we're going to get you in this call today. So um, I love the way you guys have finally condensed all the learning and what happened good. I specifically hear this, this word equals out of all of your um, learnings, which is communication. And that's the key. And you guys have mentioned it over and over saying communication was the key. Communication was the key. What communication method works best for you like shrita mentioned she she was upfront with uh, multiple communication over the calls and stuff but i i would want to know what worked best when you are in that pressure when you are in that zone when you are like about to hit it off what communication method works best for you and what if something could have been done better so let's say parallelly hosting things like video call with notes or something like that, if you have some suggestions like that, that you think would have been done much better, go ahead, take the floor. Right, so my primary method of communication with Marie was, uh, first it was video call, like weekly video calls. That worked really well for me, even though initially at that time, I was a little bit nervous. Video calls weren't a thing, at least for me back then, that this was, the start of the pandemic, right? We are much more accustomed to it now. Back then, I probably never had video call professionally someone, maybe friends, but never professionally. So there was a little bit of hesitance about talking to someone face to face, right? Um, when you're talking on email, you can compose your thoughts much better. You, you know, you have like all the time in the world to compose your answer or your response. So, but I realized that now after two years that for me, my preferred mode of communication is always now face to face. It's so much more uh, transparent. Um, there is a less chance of miscommunication. I feel you, you can't really understand tone, like tone of speech when you're communicating via email, right? Um, texting sort of also works as in as an in between because emojis and you know depending on how informal you are uh, in the internship emails help for an entirely different purpose where a lot of times if like we were discussing an issue and there were a lot of things that we needed to keep in mind 
we would probably send that over email. So it sort of acted like notes. Um, so it, that was easy to get back to. And then obviously, like for personal day to day chats or just, you know, a simple question, we would use Telegram, which I really like because it wasn't super formal. It wasn't as intimidating as sending an email just to ask one small thing. So it was just shoot a text, uh, get a reply, and then, you know, probably send a silly gif. So that made it much more easy to sort of be at ease uh, communicating with someone across the world who I've never met before. Yeah, I again <laughs> agree with Smera that, uh, yeah, just like just the classification that she did, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, also, one thing that uh, I not sure how well I did it, but just to definitely made sure that uh, this was like done is that um, whenever it's something extremely work related and it needs to be documented because this might need to be referenced later by somebody else who's going to work on the project later or even like, you know, I had a fellow intern with me. Alicia, um, who I recently met, was doing awesome in life. Uh, for everybody here who knows her and wants an update, um, yeah, uh, yeah, just writing, writing that down and having other people reference it just because they might need it later is extremely important because that cannot be done when you're having one-on-one uh, -on -one calls and uh, you need that information later. Obviously, you can take notes, which also works. Uh, but just writing that down um, one way or another is extremely important uh, um, as well as whenever it comes to things which are not very uh, technical, which again, you know, do not have a lot of information that needs to be referenced later. And especially things like, you know, when imposter syndrome kicks in or you're just feeling low or you, or, you know, if there are things which you just want an informal chat with, there I always prefer to have like, you know, a one-on-one -on -one with my manager or like, you know, uh, just, you know, whoever it is, because then it's much more easier to convey whatever it is that, you know, because then when, when the person, you can see them in front of you, they can see you, it's very, very easy to express all of those things, which are not that easy to communicate on text uh, and stuff like that. But I definitely, um, like I switch between these two, whenever uh, there are things that I need to explain, I might not do that very well when we're on call, because there's just so many things that you need to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, that's, that's generally how I go about it and how also something that I learned from Justin, uh, because he made sure that we kind of implement this throughout the uh, duration of our internship. So, yeah. Cool. I'm the last to go. Right. I'm going to say a couple words in uh, favor of IRC that we use or chats that we can use right now, because if you ask a question there, then you get like a written response which is great because if it includes links or some references, then you can save that and print that or something. Because lately what I've found, like if I'm in too many meetings, then I kind of space out <laughs> towards the end of them. And then I don't remember like, oh, they mentioned this thing, you know, or there was this concept that I didn't catch because there's like meeting, 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 right? And so you have to go back and luckily most of them are recorded now, but then you kind of end up doing the same thing twice because you or in a meeting once and then rewatch it again to take notes, uh, which is not maybe a bad thing because that's like you're learning better. But then if you have everything written down, then that's really good. Um, but also I wanted to mention that I know everything's online now, like on, on almost all the mentors and mentees are online. But the best way to review design work is just to sit next to each other and just look at it together. And if that's at all possible, like if there are any, maybe we'll start again, like meeting, you know, and having um, clubs or whatever, or just doing some sort of team meetings so people can meet and just kind of collaborate on the same thing. And I feel like video chats are a great way to get to know people better. Like even if you're not discussing any sort of work related questions, just to, to talk to each other some, from time to time, like if you, even if you prefer communication in chat, right, then it still helps a lot if you can see a person, if you can talk to them, oh, hey, like what movies did you see lately? Or what books did you read? Or like, how's your uh, pet animal doing? And stuff like that. So that's definitely not to be overlooked, but maybe, you know, video calls are becoming more and more of a thing lately. So that's understandable to everybody. And I feel like email is like the last thing you would want to send, like with maybe some formal stuff. Um, and links. I don't know. Or if you want to have like a group discussion that everybody 
and kind of take their time and think through later and just get back to you, not in chat, like in real time, but later, which can be a thing because sometimes it's, again, it's hard, like during video call to come up with something, like if you need some design decision made or something, then it's sometimes better to just sleep on it, you know, think about it for a while and then your brain will come up with something and then you can do that afterwards. Yeah, so that's my take. Awesome. So next one is a little bit tough. It's a little bit on the on the edge for you guys. And we're gonna like switch it up. So Marsha goes first and then Smira goes last, right? So that's that's the change. Now, uh, so all of you have participated in multiple of mentorship programs in open source and you kind of have been there for some time. And one thing that is very important that we look, students look forward to is what are my career opportunities once I graduate out of any of these programs? Like, what changes do I expect inside myself after I have gone through this program? Like, is it going to be just skills learning? Is it going to be skills plus leadership? Is it going to be skills plus leadership plus delegation? Is it like something that I would learn and be able to implement in my career over time, right? And then the question simply stands, after going through the program, did you find uh, that your, uh, your career pathways have opened up or something new has come up here, right? something that you would not probably have seen before the program? So Masha, you can kick it off. Ah, I get the most difficult question. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, okay. Um, let me think about it for a second. Yeah, um, so before the internship, I was a, a person in a new country where I was not sure what I was going to be doing because I didn't know the language very well. We've just moved to the Czech Republic and I was sort of learning Czech, sort of doing some, you know, um, freelance designs and Never, I guess, ever in my head did I imagine that I would be working in a, you know, international multi-language company like Red Hat. And that just kind of happened to me. <laughs> and, and I honestly could not comprehend that because, because I thought it's, it's like an IT company, you know, there's no designers, there's no design positions. So it's just not, not for me. And look at me, here I am, um, 70 years later, as an interaction designer. So that's definitely something that the internship opened up for me. Uh, I learned all the new tools, like I learned all the open source design tools and I didn't know about them before. Uh, well, maybe I knew about them, but didn't use them as much because I was not in the habit of doing that. That's one thing. And then I also learned to be sort of in a corporate environment and to communicate with people. And then also I had a lot of connections that I made, like even being in this culture or also because I was in an office quite, quite a bit back then. And so I communicated with all the people, like I grew the connections. And also we did have flocks, we did have offline DEF CONs. And so again, I met everybody, like I met a lot of people from Fedora and that those are the people that I still to this day know and talk to. And whenever I see them, um, there's my favorite most favorite people to see basically in the world. And I feel like we're still, you know, helping each other or talking to each other from time to time. And that's something that the program taught me. And also I'm gonna mention one thing, like at the beginning I was sort of a mentee because I was an intern and um, Duffy was my mentor, so to speak. But later I used a lot of what I saw in our communication with her and how she approached the mentorship. Yeah, because I used to have these uh, high school design interns. So it's just some uh, students that would come in the office and they would help out with design tickets like you know, Fedora badges and so maybe some small logos around the office and such. And so just the uh, approach that she took with me, right? So how she guided me through tasks and such that helped me really really a lot in that later because i knew how to do that because, because without it I, I probably wouldn't because i don't have like any specific training or, or anything like that so i guess that's another thing i might think of something later but i'm not sure 
All right. So should I get to kick off the next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I like obviously the first thing that I think someone we also mentioned is that. Um, I mean, prior to this internship, I didn't really have experience working on, you know, like actual things which are being used, right? So um, the biggest part of like these mentorship sort of programs is that you get to work on things which are actually being used by people. It's not just your toy project that, you know, you, you, you make yourself and then a couple of your friends use. Like it's just, it's actually a product which is being used by people and you get to make changes there and see how your changes made impact to all of those other people, right? So first thing is that that you get that sense of uh, belonging that yes, whatever you're doing that is having an impact and, it's not, and you're not just working in a void. So that's the first thing that I got out of like, you know, all of these mentorship uh, internships that I did. Um, second thing is that uh, so when you have this experience and then when you go ahead and apply to jobs or switch jobs or whatever it is you do um, there, this experience really helps because you already have this experience of impactful work and that speaks for itself like you also have experience of working with people who have um like you know like standards would be said because open source had such huge standards for regard to support quality to the kind of processes that you imply to get employed to get things done uh, the kind of communication that you use all of these things are so well done in open source that for any corporate world that you enter it's it's just going to be a breeze for you because you already know uh, what is the right way? When should you ping people? When should you email them? Is it too often or is it too less? Um, when is it that you need help? You shouldn't sit on a problem too long because all of these things are solved for you because you've already experienced them in a, a semi-professional environment, right? Uh, so these things really help. And these are some things that uh, really helped me because when I entered and, and because like when I started a lot of other folks uh, who are the same age as me also started, and that is something that they clearly saw difference who hadn't, uh, had this experience was that they really struggled with communication. They always used to be afraid. When should I talk to you know my manager or when should I not? Or uh, they just used to wait around a lot and asking questions because they, they were just afraid that what if they think that I'm stupid? But the thing is that in a corporate environment, you can't just sit on something for too long and then the timelines are screwed. You need to get it going, right? And because in open source, your mentors like Yona and Justin really did a good job of just making you feel at home and um, just making me feel like I can ask questions. I'm not going to be interpreted as stupid if I just like, you know, ask too many questions. So uh, just these things really made it possible for a very easy transition from student life, to, you know, actually as a working professional. So uh, these things, and especially one of the things that I feel like is very well done in these mentorship programs is just the entire process, like the entire team, which is behind setting this entire thing up from actually posting the uh, particular project on, you know, Outreachy or GSOC and for the final completion that you actually publish the report on like, you know, the Fedora community blog or whatever it is for GSOC. This entire pipeline from you read the description, you understand what you need to do, you go, go to the right channels, you know, the mailing list or the Telegram group or the IRC, you communicate with them, you go through the entire process of actually getting selected, you go through the entire process of actually doing the work that needs to be done. Uh, doing all of the necessary things in it and then actually completing it. Um, this entire process really teaches you a lot about how an, a project goes from just a thought to actually being executed, which is very, very important for every single project that you do when you're in a professional uh, setting. And uh, just iterating on that and learning a lot from that really helps you. You're not a newbie when you actually enter a full time job. You actually have experience of okay how this is how it is executed so that's that's a that's something that i have used so many times it then i've implemented so much of how things were done at fedora in like you know even where i'm working just because it was so well done so yeah this this if these are like you know few things that you pick up from this mentorship that you're going to be selected for for anybody uh who's like you know watching this uh who's hoping to get selected um, I really hope that these are some things that you focus on uh, while you go to the internship. And especially one last thing is that just the quality of code you write and especially, you know, the PR that you open, the kind of descriptive comments that you add, just just really high standards for even comment messages that I remember when Justin used to write a PR, he just used to like crack his knuckles when it was time to write a comment message. Like it was just like such a long, like, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs and go back to any commit, you will get the entire context of why this change was done. And this is something which is very, very, you don't want to be pinging your coworkers at like odd times just to understand, you know, why this is done, especially when you're working in a distributed team. 
So yeah, I'll, I'll stop my rant now. <laughs> What I have to say is actually a combination of what Marsha and Shraddha mentioned. So actually before this intern, like before my outreach internship, I did not know about open source design. Um, I, I thought that open source only had a sort of tech component, never really was exposed to the design part. So uh, I was uh, very happily surprised. And I, and I also thought that this was a one-off, right? Like during, like, before my internship, I thought that this is just one single project that probably focuses on design also, right? Not really something that you would find commonly or like people would have jobs for. Uh, so that was a good surprise. And that's how I got inducted into the open source community. Um, in fact, the job that I have right now is very closely re related to my internship. Um, so if I were to trace a path after I was done with my internship, I was still in contact with some of the people from Fedora. And um, then one day, Justin approached me and he asked me uh, to be on. Uh, he was on a podcast. He was a, a, like he was on a part podcast for sustainable open source design. And he asked me to be a guest on it. So I said yes, even though I was kind of scared because I didn't think I had any, anything to add. But we talked about open source design, um, India, outreach. -y. That was a good experience, and on that on that podcast, there were six other people who uh, who were on the panel and who were already established or were doing something in the open source com design community. Right now, when I applied to my job, this is I think a year or so after that, they actually mentioned the podcast. I I didn't actually like talk to them directly about it. It was on my portfolio. They mentioned that podcast. They said they'd listen to it, and they knew someone who was on the panel. Right, and that's what they they sort of made like a positive comment about it that oh, I actually listened to that because we know so and so who is also who's also on that podcast. So I think for me that was you know one of the reasons that I got selected for my job, and this is a very direct consequence. That and what Shraddha mentioned about soft skills, right? Uh, you pick up a lot of um, call like how to work basically, not exactly like. Obviously, you will pick up a lot of skills. I, I like learned a lot of tools, open source design tools, and just in general design skills. But also how to work, how to communicate with someone you're working with, you know, how to ask questions, when to ping people, and how to do that. Right? Not just open-ended questions. I I could see a difference between like me before the internship and me after the internship, and I have carried that throughout in other internships and the job that I've done. And also, I think the best thing of all is just the comfort level that you have, like after working uh, with other people. I feel like this is sort of like a, um, how do you say, like a safety safety net. And like you're you are still working in in an in an organization or in a community where you're involved with other people, but it isn't as intimidating as you know, like a corporate environment could be because everyone here is very nice and you know like they they are mentoring you so they expect you to make mistakes and they are not like they're not there are no punishments for making mistakes so just this kind of like a safe environment to have your first working experience in makes you feel very confident and so now when I'm actually working or I have calls with my colleagues, I am not scared. I, I don't have to sit for an hour before each call just to make sure that everything is fine. You know, I'm not, I don't have the, I don't have the panic sweats basically now. And it's because that I went through this internship that I had the confidence that I'm able to do this now. So yeah. All right. So, um, that was a toughy question. So you guys, I'm, I'm glad you guys answered it really nicely for people. That There is a lot of takeaway from people like you who have graduated out of such internship programs and are doing really nice in um, the industry. So um, one thing that always comes back to the orgs, right? As the orgs who are mentoring you guys is what do you, in a far distant future, probably like let's say five years, if we were to look back and say, okay, if the org or the mentors or the org admins 
and the structure in itself were to be slightly turned and it would have favored us really nice. What would that slight turn be? Like, think of it like a change either in your mentor communicating. So you guys have awesome mentors who have communicated really well, set expectations really nice. What is this one thing that still is kind of there if you want to address, you want to talk about, uh, you guys are out of internship programs now. So yeah, like you can talk about it freely. So go ahead, uh, tell me something that the org, either the org, the mentors, and the org admin. So in, in this case, admins would be me, Ripple, Akash, uh, Mori, right? So we could have done better in order to support you guys in the what I do is I'll actually take that question first because I've been like kind of dodging and like, you know, doing the, doing it in between. So let me take that question first. So um, Fedora is actually extremely easy uh, from like the get go, like just even contacting mentors, like I've done it for other uh, like, you know, organization and it's, it's a pain, like just even to start that conversation, that conversation thread, whether it be like, you know, IRC or email or whatever it is, it's, it's a pain, but with Fedora, that was really, really easy. Like if you look at the professional aspect of it from uh, that first, uh, you know, interaction to actually getting the project done, it has been very easy. And I and mentioned this and think that went really well was that the communication was very strong, but this was very true for all the professional things, for all the doubt solving that I needed, for uh, all the things that I needed in context for the project itself. But then outside of it, there was not much room uh, to, you know, like outside of just my project mentors, there was not much room to just uh, communicate, you know, freely with the other interns in, in you know, different projects, that maybe the GSOC interns. I met them when we had um, an offsite. But uh, before that, there wasn't really any interactions where I could, you know, like talk to them before, in, even informally, right? Just having maybe something. Um, I, I remember we had an interview uh, session, uh, something that, we gave a, a form and we just filled out like, you know, like a couple of questions about ourselves, also a couple of informal questions. And then there's a, those of I believe uh, Samantro uh, heads that, I think. Uh, so uh, that was really nice. And I got to read and got to know them, but there was no actually, you know, face and face time with them, where I could actually interact with them and not just them, but also the mentors for them as well, right? Just getting interact involved with the community. So that would have been really nice just to talk to them or uh, and, and I know it might be too much to ask, but just also if, you know, a weekly or, or a monthly thing, if something like that could be set up, just like, a you know, a coffee, a donut call or something like that, where, you know, you could just interact with more people in the organization. Uh, I know everybody is very busy, but this would this would like make uh, this would be like awesome to have just to know more people in the community and not be a stranger, although like Fedora does an awesome job at it as like already but just uh, something to add uh, there. And uh, um, yeah, and I think uh, Mary is mentioning something to do an analyze social and yeah, we should definitely do that. Like I would definitely want to meet, you know, all the rest of the interns that were before and after me, like that would be awesome. So yeah, that was just a little bit, uh, little idea that I had, like, you know, like how this is happening and just like, you know, just this thing where we're having a mental summit. This would have been like so helpful back in the day when, you know, I was, planning to be an intern and you know trying to get there so yeah just that was that was me right um i actually don't have a lot to add in this question mainly because this was my first experience and i think this is the only open source community i've been actively part of so for me i have i don't have a scale to sort of measure but for me everything went really nicely uh the one one thing that is sort of impractical but would be good to have is as marsha mentioned design is something that is best done when you are sitting together and just like oh you know you're getting reviews you're sitting together and just in that like physical space being together that for me also works best i know that this is a remote internship so actually you know like turning it into a physical one would be counterproductive but to have that option of physical meetups uh, you know obviously covid happened so we don't have clock and or things like this anymore but those are really necessary not just for the fun aspect for it of it but also to get to know other people uh, be more at ease 
and just when you when you are physically hanging out with someone or even working that's a whole different ball game than being on a call or like working digitally so i'm just gonna say what marie mentioned in chat in chat that there's the interns would go to flock all the time so would they kind of meet each other but then i realized that nowadays the flock's not been happening for two years now how many i don't know covid has been there for a long time uh, i guess that's an issue right so they don't meet together and i guess it'd be nice to just have regular calls um and as for my take on this question, I've been I've been thinking really hard since yesterday, since I got the question, like uh, what could have been done differently? What went didn't go well? I honestly, I don't know. Like the only thing that I can think of, and it's not directly related to the internship, is that the setup to just get started and get contributing, and maybe just you know installing some of the software used to be kind of maybe a little bit hard. Ish. I'm not sure like how it is right now. I know the team has been working very hard to fix that. Um, so people would get on board it more easily, especially in the design team, the people who are not as technical, maybe who have trouble setting up SSH keys and uh, stuff like that, who need help doing that and can get job doing that on online. Um, but that's honestly like the only thing that I could think of, truly. I actually have one more thing to add uh, in extension to what you just said is that um, in the very beginning, like in the first few weeks, um, everything is just a little, there's just, just a little bit of friction because you're not that comfortable in the community yet or even with your mentors, like, you know, asking questions. If in that period, uh, we could like just uh, set up more frequent calls with our mentor rather than just once a week just while we're getting the setup done or just, you know, just we're, we're just getting started with the project. If that frequency could be uh, just a little bit higher and obviously accordance with the mentor if they have the time for it definitely uh, that would actually bring down a lot of asynchronous con um, you know conversation and just in turns just you know sitting with their head between their head between their hands and like you know trying to understand how to make this work how to you know just run this that would that would also you know like Again, you know, like you asked the question, Samantha, about communication thing. That is just a little bit of, you know, time frame where I really um, think that it would help to just have more synchronous communication uh, instead of doing just like, you know, maybe a one uh, call a week thing. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's, that's very detailed and that's really good. So um, there are a lot of takeaway items, like literally Murray and people are planning things right now on the basis of the discussion so that that's good that's good that, that's the input that we were looking at um, okay one uh, thing that always comes to our mind when we look at an org right we look at all these candidates coming and going we see all these people showing interest and uh, and we always kind of want to retain them we, we have this thing that let's retain most of these people some form or the other in either in a formal mentorship, in an informal mentorship, uh, probably in a setting where they would feel uh, comfortable contributing even the slightest bit, but they should be connected with the community. What reward mechanisms come to your mind? What mechanisms come to your mind when it comes to interns being retained by projects in this case? That's right? So what, what comes to Go, um, go. go ahead. Okay. Um, I would say that's a good question because I myself struggled with this because right after my internship ended, I got involved with college and I felt really guilty about not being able to put in enough time uh, to be involved in the community, right? Especially because for the three months I had only done that. And then after that, it was basically nil. Right, uh, there were some, uh, I would mostly get involved in events. So I think that is something uh, like not something day to day, but you know, whenever there was an event or uh, when there was Nest, we also had Federal Women's Day. So for, for those specific events for that period, I would get more active. Um, so I think that's a, that's a good way to, to call back people 
you know, even this, doing this, right? Like having a panel where people can come and talk. So it might not be the kind of contribution. It's not basically just resolving issues. But this is the sort of contribution that people can take time out of their day to do, right? And secondly, offline events. I I was looking forward to flock during my time, but it's been two years now. But I think, you know, if, if there's always that incentive of, you know, after we do this, we get to have a lot of fun. We get to hang out, um, party, network, everything. So all of that is a sort of incentive for, I think, for people to stay. Yeah, completely, completely agree with Smera that, um, Again, offline events help, but uh, even online events like this one, like um, after even my internship, like Smera mentioned, I wasn't in constant, uh, you know, like I was in touch with my mentors, but then apart from that to the wider community, I wasn't really in touch with for long. But then whenever it came to events like this or organizing a Federal Women's Day in my college uh, back when we, uh, like in, I think, uh, yeah, 2019 itself, because, uh, yeah, before times. So yeah, stuff like that really helped because um, I could still promote whatever it is that I learned in Fedora to the wider you know community that I was in touch with outside of Fedora, right? And bring in folks from there. A couple of my juniors actually joined the Fedora community. Uh, they're active in it uh, even now. So uh, these things really help. Uh, just even now, like I'm here after like three or four years, you know, talking about whatever it is that I learned during my time uh, as a mentor here. So uh, just these kind of events, I think, help. But outside of that, even, you know, if, if you folks have any idea uh, how even I could, like, you know, get involved again, that would be great. That would be, I'd, I'd be happy to know. Yeah, I, I take my previous words back. This is the hardest question. I know a lot of people have been working to solve this, like how to stay people. Uh, make people stay with Fedora after they've done with their internships and mentorships or whatever. And it is, it is really hard. And one of the things that I thought of during uh, the years that I was thinking about it is that uh, it takes a certain type of people to kind of keep contributing. And one of the things that I've heard from talking to a bunch of uh, Fedora folks is that what they like to do in life is that they like to help people out. So if somebody has a problem, and they work to solve it during their internship or just as a contributor. And then they get the feedback back that, hey, that worked, thank you very much, like you made my life better. And then just the pure reward of doing that and just getting something back from the community, it's maybe one of the best things. And just the community itself, like I mentioned this before, and to this day, like whenever I, I see someone from the Fedora uh, community. Maybe they do, do not even contribute anymore. Maybe they've moved on, but I still feel like they're sort of, you know, family, um, all great people. So that, and just the pure possibility of going <laughs> to flock would make me contribute so much harder, honestly, because sometimes I have an in the back of my mind, like, hey, maybe I should do something for Fedora. But, you know, I have a little son and I have a full time job and it can be hard to actually to get to do something like even if I, there's something I really love. But then if I thought, hey, I can go to flock. Oh, my God, <laughs> I would make time for sure. All right. So we are about nine minutes away from the session to wrap up and we have four questions. So this is going to be kind of like rapid fire, if you will. Uh, so here we go. First thing, um, as a former mentee, do you feel like you could be a mentor? Um, I'll take that one first. I am actually doing my first outreachy project this summer as a mentor. So <laughs> it's it's I, I won't say that it's not super scary, it's intimidating, especially because I was like I feel like I was right there two years ago, right? I was on the other end. So I'm like, okay, it's it's been so much time already that now I am a mentor. That like, uh, you know, when I told my parents, uh, I explained it to them like this. I'm like, you know how Marie was a mentor to me. I'm going to be someone's Marie. And then and then that thought just sort of like, oh my god, oh my god, I have big shoes to fill. Then you know, um, so yeah, I think 
it does make you want to do that and also obviously gives you all these skills there is also that internal sort of uh, how do you say anxiety about being able to do a good job but other than that obviously it pushes you to be a mentor you're making mary cry <laughs> stop <laughs> Yeah, but no, yeah, I, I think it's like the best way to progress in, in your career into the life, just going from mentee to being a mentor. Like I mentioned before, I used to have all the interns and I would sort of build up on the knowledge that I got from Mo and just to think back, like, what would a Mo do in this situation? Like, what, what would she <laughs> tell them? And so it's great that you have someone to fall, sort of fall back onto, right? And someone to ask questions, like if you need advice, and uh, you probably have encountered many great people in your life who have sort of guided you on your job path, maybe even after the mentorship happens. So you can always think, oh, hey, what, what would they do in this situation? And that's always a great uh, thing that would help you. And I think it's just only natural to become someone's mentor, sort of to give back what you received, right? And like, if I had an opportunity to be someone's mentor again, I, I would totally do it because it's very rewarding again just uh, teaching someone stuff that you've learned, right? And showing them how they can contribute, how can they um, move on with their career. That's all the great things that you can do. I think uh, you folks almost covered everything that I wanted to say here, but just like one more thing since it's rapid fire anyway, is that um, it doesn't just, you know, like is limited to these mentorship programs that like this also extends into your like full-time job. Like I was, uh, I think back in October last year, I was all interviewing folks to actually join uh, my company. And just that experience, like how Justin must have done for us, like he he actually not interviews per se, but just like, you know, he talked to us and then like, you know, decided on who to actually, you know, become his mentee and stuff like that. That actually like, you know, helped me kind of like, you know, do that. And we talked about it as well, Justin and me. It, it, and it really like when they actually joined full time, it was such a fulfilling feeling just knowing that you were also part of, you know, their journey. And I'm hiring interns again in the company who I, I'm going to be, men, I'm going to be mentoring. So it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's, it's a, it's an awesome feeling. And yeah, I, I really hope I'm able to do half good as a job as Justin did with you. Awesome. So um, any advices for a future aspirant Fedora project internship candidate? So any 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 advices from you guys? Any any tips? Any hacks? Any any specific things to look out for? I would I would say um, don't be afraid. That's I think if I could condense it because I remember during my internship I was very afraid of a lot of things of doing a bad job of you know even communicating on. Um, like on the public channel, like, oh, what, what would other people think of me? But I think, and, and this is this is the advice that we would also get at that time, like, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, no one's going to judge you. There's no stupid question. And, and even right now, I feel that, okay, that was actually the best advice that we could get. It's hard to internalize, sure. It's like, it comes through practice. But once you get over that fear, that sort of hesitance, that you would get from like being a newcomer to the community. Once you get over that, you will feel right at home here and you will learn so much. Like there, no one ever judges you for not knowing uh, stuff. I mean, it, two days before I texted to the public chat, I don't know how to make a commit, so I, I can't. And <laughs> that's I think that's a very basic thing that people can do in the open source community. But I was like, okay, I don't know. I have, I, I'm technically a computer science engineer in my final year. I've done four years. I still don't know how to do a commit, but that's fine. Then someone else, uh, you know, agreed to help me out and this, and we were like, okay, we'll sit together and do this. And it's going to be a learning experience. So don't be afraid. That's my advice. Yeah, if I can second that. And also uh, something I thought of is that if any sort of opportunities come your way and if you get any suggestions to take part in this and that, don't say no. Say yes all the time. Like even if you think you don't know what's going to happen, 
like uh, you're, you're not sure you can do it say say yes i mean say yes and then you'll figure it out and basically if you're still unsure like fake it till you make it like pretend you know everything <laughs> I just go into it and chances are you you already know what you need to know and if you don't you're gonna learn while you I don't know preparing for, for something and then you're gonna meet a lot of great people meanwhile like on your way to that I'll just start with that is that uh, just keep the open source spirit alive like don't make it into a rat race where you're competing with like you know the other folks who are also you know trying to like make into this project just keep the open source spirit alive, help, pe help people, help out other people, like, you know, even review their PRs if like your mentors, like, you know, give you the green light. Just um, always be helpful and always try to sustain the community instead of, you know, trying to be like the odd duck here. So yeah, just that. All right, um, the last question. And this is like, what practice would you recommend to a mentee in order to make a better experience in terms of learning and growing. So you guys have already uh, talked a lot about mentees uh, following certain footsteps. Any practices that you guys follow, like meditation, yoga, you know, I don't know. Okay. Any practices that you guys follow that made you productive in terms of learning and growing? So something that has worked really well for me always, like I do it even now, is that write, write everything. Like my notes are just filled with my conversations that I did back in the day with like Yona, Justin, uh, even when like I went uh, um, you know, on the offsite with like, you know, Dr. Fedora. But even from then, I have like so many notes from so many conversations that you have with like so many people that you meet. It's your brain this it's it's not a hard disk it's not going to keep everything in store you're not going to remember everything but uh, uh you're definitely like if you have all of them written down uh you're definitely going to remember things that really hit you back in the day which now you might have forgotten so just write write out your thoughts journal if you may but uh, definitely just keep a lot of notes mm, i would say um to not give up on problems but know when to take a break right especially this is something that i still haven't gotten the hang of doing especially in design when you're making something if it doesn't come to you you can work on it for hours and hours and hours at end you're not going to get it right if i'm to, i'm supposed to come up with a badge or something i could spend hours and if it's not coming to me it's just not going to happen that day Right. I need to take a break. I need to, you know, get some external inspiration, some motivation, maybe walk around, need to take a break, get away from the screen, sleep on it. And trust me, it will be better. But make sure that you have done your best before you reach that point where, where you have exhausted most of your options and you're like, OK, I know that I can't do any more of this it's a fine balance between you know giving up too early or just basically giving up the first time you run into a problem and versus going at it even though it's not productive anymore but yeah once you find that balance it's going to make your work and your learning experience so much better where you are not going to feel uh you know oh you don't know anything like a lot of times what happened used to happen if I was working on a design and it's just not coming to me. I would think, OK, I have failed as a designer. I am ashamed to the community. I don't know anything. I don't know basic color theory. I don't know about like visual stuff. I don't know anything. Then the next day I would sleep on it. Then the next day it would come to me instantly, you know. So that sort of thing is going to happen. You're just going to have to be easy on yourself. Guys, uh, that's me now. I don't know. Uh, maybe one of the things which I didn't follow myself, but I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. You can set goals for yourself, like what do I want to accomplish as a result of this internship or mentorship or program or something that you're taking, right? And just have that goal in mind, like maybe what you want to learn during that, or maybe what, what do you want to grow into? Do you want to, you know, get a job, or is there, do you want to accomplish this many projects? Do you want to build a portfolio? so maybe something like that would be helpful and again write everything down i really love that i remember i still have somewhere like printouts of irc conversations with mo with some advice you know <laughs> with my 
things underlined um yeah that's so true i like to write everything down too all the time still to this day awesome so it was really nice hearing your thoughts out experiences and everything um well there is always a lot of learning is a is, is a ever going and ever moving process for me it has always been so thanks for being here on a saturday sharing experiences this means a really lot to all the people who are watching these are the people who have uh, actually gone ahead and done um, really exceptional contributions to open source software and also some of them are running inventors this year so yeah you might be able to work with them in, in right so thank you all